Okay, so that's the great question on if you if you um, do uh, Muji's work and experience yourself, experience the presence by letting go of uh, th all thoughts of future, of past, of personality, of uh, identification with body, with images. If you let all of that go and drop all of that and don't hook into any of that, one experiences uh, a limitless presence or a stillness. And uh, I was asked a few questions. Uh, I'll try and answer all of them. One of them was like, well, if you experience that, if you drop everything and just experience this limitless presence, how do you function in your job? Or would you not be able to function in your job? I also asked a separate question on um, what does duality and non-duality mean? Um, so, well, let me talk a little bit about duality and non-duality. So, uh, quite a lot of teachers are called non enlightened teachers are often called non-dual teachers. Um, I believe uh, I'm not an expert on the Indian culture, but I believe they call that Advaita, uh, the non-dual. The experience uh, non non-duality is, uh, I would describe it as when I experience myself as a separate person relating to other, otherness. So there's a me relating to other people, relating to other objects. So the world, so I'm experiencing myself in separation to everything. And that, that's an experiential thing. So there's a me. Often we, uh, Muji would describe it as body-mind. So the thinking and the mind are the, are the source of separation. Often as you, uh, the, if, you if you were to experience, if there's experiencing, you know, languaging becomes quite interesting or difficult. If there's experiencing of the non-dual state, then the, uh, it's like the individuality disappears and there's just a state of limitless presence. And there's no sense of there's a me relating to others, there's a oneness, there's a wholeness. The sense of a separate me relating to otherness disappears. It becomes more of a state, or a flow state, or a limitless state, or a limitless presence, or a limitless stillness. This sense of me relate, you know, as the separated ego self body thought starts to get hooked into, it's like almost like a location. And it's like, oh, there's a me, and I'm thinking about the future, and oh, you know, that person is separate to me, and I wonder what they're thinking. All of that stuff dis disappears, and there's a beautiful presence and stillness, an so all-encompassing all state would be the right, right word. It's no longer an individual referencing otherness. So that would be the experiencing of the non-dual state, or, or duality, or the states of separation. Uh, would be uh, there's a me experiencing otherness, so that would be the, the thing. Uh, enlightenment is uh, uh, is um, uh, is I would call it enlightenment is the death of the ego, the death of this sense of individuated self, so that one experiences the one one experiences the wholeness that the separation of the ego created. Now, a lot of this work, uh, and I think uh, in terms of context, uh, I think uh, uh, Dr. Hawkins' work um, really um, elaborates a lot about the con uh, context. But generally, um, when there's huge identification with thoughts and body, and there's a lot of suppressed feelings which have not been released, there's a very, very strong feeling of separation, very strong identification with the body, very strong identification with thoughts. Usually the thoughts, um, thought activity and rapidity tends to increase a lot. There tends to be a lot of thinking, future, past, control. There's, you know, one can get into panic attacks, into addictive behavior, suicidal thoughts. All of that stuff means strong strong hooking into uh, the ego self. Um, as one starts to do any type of spiritual work, it could be in a 12-step group, a church, a Buddhist place, letting go of attachments, or forgiveness, uh, surrendering, um, all of this of forgive, you know, all of this work, praying, 
you know, then a lot of the darkness of the ego and the contraction, the sense of separation, start, and the, the dark emotions start to dissipate. One starts to get into more serene states of peace. But then also, there's still this sense of individuality, like I've got to pay my bills. I need to go to work. I hope my boss doesn't fire me today. All of this type of stuff is still going on. Because with a lot of, um, like if you were going to a 12-step group, um, which is not a non-dual, it's not a non-dual teaching, it doesn't take you up to enlightenment, so you still believe you're a person. And you still believe you have to think. So in those states, you know, you'd be feeling a lot more serene and peaceful after doing a, a program of spiritual surrender. But you still wouldn't be past the place of the absence of the individuated self. Now, I was asked this question like, you know, this fear, this fear of going into uh, those states which Muji talks about. Um, and Muji, I would say, would be in, a, in, um, in strong alignment with uh, The Course in Miracles. Because, you know, some of my favorite, I would say, you know, the, the, some of the core lessons from A Course in Miracles uh, are that some of the early lessons, uh, all my thoughts are meaningless. So forget your thoughts, forget all your personality, forget everything that, that's within the ego. And also, um, I'm not a body. I think this is really, really important. And uh, there's a, I think that a lot of people have different views on this. But for me, the identification with the body creates a very strong sense of uh, separation. The hooking into, when you hook into thoughts, hook into body, creates this sense of separation. A lot of people would have fear around that. It's like, I don't want to let my body go. But then, you know, then the, this sense of individual, individuality. I mean, I'm not saying anything is right or wrong. As you start to go, but... What, I mean, what I'd say, I mean, there's, there's fears around money, work, earning a living, how to practically do things. And um, there's a few ways I'd answer that, depending on the context and the person who's asking it. One is, if you're worried about money and showing up at job, uh, showing up in your job and performing, then the way to do it is to transcend the work while you're working there. So you, you, you would, um, the thing is, you know, you, um, the way I was experiencing it is like, practice this work in, um, initially with friends in the park, you know, so that it's like, do you need, you know, eventually you'll be able to, if you test it out with friends or in spiritual groups, can you be in those states? and keep practicing, keep letting go of the thoughts or going to the observer or the witnesser or make your body meaningless or your thoughts meaningless. And eventually something will start to emerge as the consciousness rises where talking can happen without the ego needing to be involved in it. Speaking can happen, moving can happen. So it's almost like a higher level or a state of consciousness can start to, start to uh, happen in those safer situations. But then also you, one starts to apply those in the work situation. So one is going to higher vibrations. For me, eventually, as you go into these, because all of this stuff is like, um, you know, for me, there's no right and wrong as to how far one goes. One doesn't have to go all the way. If one wants to like hang on to the body a lot or a little bit or hang on to the thinking a lot or a little bit, there's nothing wrong or right. They're just different levels of consciousness. You know, um, like I need to pay the mortgage and keep my 30k salary job under all costs so I can keep my lifestyle and contribute to the company. And I, I'm not willing to go through the fear of letting go of my personality and my ego and my body more so that I would not be able to function there because I think that's good for me. That's fine. So you just stick around uh, at that level. Always uh, for me, um, like for me, I, I've, I've experienced uh, very profound mystical experiences and my faith. Uh, so for me, I want to go all the way. It's not because I want to go all the way. It doesn't mean everyone has to go all the way. But I also see that 
all of these I, all of these things are tied into the ego's fear of letting go at different levels of consciousness. At each level uh, that the spiritual aspirant arises to let go more, there's always going to be fear, f fear to let go more. If I let go, I won't be able to pay my bills. If I let go, uh, I might not be connected to my body any longer. If I let go, I might not be interesting or be able to communicate. Effect. If I let go, I might lose my friends. If I let go, I might not be able to pay the rent. So all of these things, all of these things arise at different levels of consciousness, and it's not necessary to let them go. It's like um, I would uh, I would say that one of the things I think, which is a great, uh, which I I share a lot about in this group. Uh, there's many different ways to God, and I don't say anything is wrong or right. There, some of the two major pathways are service and the pathway of the mystic. And one of the things for me uh, is like I have no, um, like I've shared, uh, and uh, the, the, with the teachings of, um, you know, there's the teachings in, the, um, well, a few things. One of them is TM meditation. They they've done some research whereby if, um, if what is it, like 4,000 meditators in the middle of Boston meditating for 20 minutes a day and that's all, you know, that's all they're doing. This research is online on the internet and the violent crime rate went down 43%. So it's like, you know, the thing of like the ego, like I've got to get, I've got to do a job and perform a function and earn money because then I'll be contributing to society and doing good in the world, you know. And uh, but there's no value to the world or to myself if I meditate, you know. That's that's like a valueless, meaningless activity. I'm not, I'm not serving God and the world by emptying myself of my stuff. But for me, it's like I have no, I have no shame or no guilt to just be in those high states because for me, it's like. Just being in those states is a massive service, even though you don't get recognition. Like, you know, you fed a hundred, you know, this person fed a hundred starving people in the streets today, and you meditated in your room alone. So it's like, well, you haven't got much, you're not doing much for the world, you're not contributing. Um, and, um, um, and also, so for me, I think one of the great things in letting go of just your perceptions of the world is Dr. Hugh Len, who, uh, who I share endlessly about. But it's just, as you clear your perceptions of the world, you know, great, great stuff happens in the world, even though it doesn't seem to be recognized. The other thing would be, so the way I contextualize it is like, nothing's right or wrong. I'm not saying that any, anybody, any, any, anyone should do, everyone should do what, everyone will do anyway, whatever they want to do. And it's, and it's, I don't want to control it, but, but the way I sort of seeing it is like, from what I understand, the more you let go, one becomes more, uh, one becomes more a part of God's will, and everything that, um, and to let go more and more, there's always going to be more and more fear, and you know, those those are typical things. Like, um, it's not necessary to let go. I mean, it's quite possible if you let go, you might bliss out. I, mean, well, I think I'm not familiar with Eckhart's story, I think, but I think it's something like he went into a strong spiritual experience and was sitting on park benches, blissed out for a while. So those kind of things may, <laughs> may, may happen. But for me, it's like, you know, for every enlightened teacher who goes through those phases, I'm very grateful. I, I'm sure a lot of his mother would probably say, like, you know, that's a failure. What was your, your whole education for, or if you've gone into those profound states? Like Buddha, what would Buddha's mother say? You know, becoming a spiritual teacher when he could have been a prince. So, so to the world, or his father would probably say, well, you could have been earning a job or doing something useful rather than meditating under a tree. You know, or you could have been earning more money or conquering a few more countries. You know, that would have been more useful for your life than just blissing out and just talking to people. So, again, you know, the ego comes up with these different fears. But like for myself, I mean, I would put that, you know, I'd be happy to be blissed out. If my job fell away, I would see that as God's will. 
because I'm entering a new vibrational connection on a higher plane, whatever that would be, grace would use that for the highest good. Uh, and I see that holding on to fears and things like I have to function or if I let go of the functioning. But I'm not saying that, you know, I'm not saying that I'm not saying that anything is right or wrong, right? and everyone must choose where they go with that. Um, and if you want to function, but for me, like, even if you pursued this work, uh, I've seen in, uh, in people who even go into 12-step groups, often if they do that work for long enough, the jobs they want and the careers they want to do are often very different to the things they had when they were at lower levels of experiencing. And often, as you let go, in every spiritual group, they find that the more you let go, the more you have faith that something will take care of you. So these different parameters come in, but they're different fears at different levels.